Hello and welcome to this Budget Builds episode, where today we'll be finding out can overclocking turn a cheap graphics card into a gaming machine? Today we'll be using the Radeon HD 6450, a card that I got for free as it was being thrown away. Now overclocking is the ability to change both core and memory speeds of a graphics card, which overall makes it run a bit faster than it was at stock speeds. However, today we're limited by two things, heat and voltage. Firstly, the card won't let me touch the voltage control, so that's not really a worry here. But the card only has a heat sink with no fan, so we're going to be limited by how much heat this card actually outputs. The HD 6450 itself was released in quarter one of 2011, complete with half a gig of DDR3 RAM, a true limiting factor here. Using MSI Afterburner, we've been able to overclock from 625MHz on core and 667MHz on memory to a rather large 730MHz on core and 830MHz on memory. As this card seems to be clocked rather low out of the factory, it has massive potential when it came to overclocking. So with no further ado, let's see how this card handles in benchmark. Up first we have Grand Theft Auto 5. Now not a major increase in FPS overall, but still, the memory seems to be limiting us here as the card's half a gig of very slow DDR3 is a bottleneck. The overclock did help slightly and was heavily responsible for removing that stutter. With averages of 24 FPS, the game was playable, albeit a little bit slow. So far, overclocking is giving us a nice little boost and lowering resolution would likely yield us a few more FPS. Moving on to CSGO, with low settings at 720p, we see that overclocking yield us a rather large increase here, with averages going from 41 to 56. The game felt overall much smoother, and in a game such as Counter-Strike, the higher FPS is, the higher chance to win is. In a scenario where the VRAM is not a limiting factor, we see the FPS is being heavily influenced by the higher clock speed and higher memory speeds. Dropping down the resolution, removing shadows, or anything like this would get yield you more FPS, heavily needed in a competitive game such as this. Skyrim here, we opted for the medium preset at 720p. The game originally set itself to high, however I felt the card was more suited to a lower setting. Running the game with FXAA and 8x antroscopic filtering yielded us an average of 26 FPS on stock and 34 on overclock settings. The numbers here also dipped below 20 FPS on both cards, however for the master amount of gameplay, the overclock allowed for a much smoother experience and was completely playable on the overclocked version. A more action-based game such as Far Cry 3 it really allows us to see the overclock here shine. Running at 720p low settings, we can see that the overclock allows us to hit a smooth 30fps average, which only have a dip down to 18fps during really intense scenes. The stock clocks have a paled in comparison, struggling to hit a 22fps average and constantly dropping down to a 15fps minimum. The low clocks of the standard DDR3 are likely to blame.
rounding off with Borderlands 2, a game which really just showed weakness in the card due to its weak specifications to begin with. The game averaged 23 FPS on overclock speeds and only 5 FPS less than that on stock. Although minimum frames were high on the overclocked, the game was not playable all too well and lowering the resolution would have had to have been necessary. To conclude, can overclocking a junk card turn into a treasure of a graphics card? Well in some cases it can be the very difference between playable and unplayable, just edging over that 24-30fps mark which is the bare minimum when it comes to any kind of gaming. In many cases though, it made gameplay much smoother and for competitive gaming in particular, it gave me an edge ahead of the competition that I just wouldn't have had with stock speeds. However, the card is not exactly made for massive amounts of gaming and the overclock is limited by the quality of the silicon, so each overclock will vary per card and it can't exactly make your card any more physically powerful which will cripple performance in some games. However, thank you very much for watching. Good night.